Now then, and welcome back to another episode of Nemgo Reborn on the Nemgo server. It's about to go night, and I'm just taking these cows from the uh, the forest over there where they spawn to my keep over here where they do not spawn, but I actually need some. So I've been trying to do this, getting them over here, and now it's turned dark, uh, and I'm pressing another one button. They really, really, really lose focus in the wheat very fast. It could be just a little bit of a server latency uh, between me and the server. So I move faster than the cows do on the server. But we're getting there. Um, I'm going to tr have to go through mobs now, though. We're going to struggle. But today, that is not what I'm really after anyway. Today, the, the episode is all about these stars. We're going to be doing astral sorcery today. So uh, I thought I'd get these done out of the way before it went dark, and now it's going dark. Here we go. That's fun. Now, yeah, here we go. Now, there's a few bits and pieces that I need to craft and create for Astral Sorcery to begin, because I don't seem to have my journal anywhere. So once I've got this sorted, I will meet you upstairs in the Astral Sorcery Lounge for some more, uh, and we'll get started, hopefully before the night's over. Okay, so here we are. This is as far as I've ever got with Astral Sorcery. I've found some of these constellation papers in uh, places that I've explored around and about. And I've dug up those places, pillars and ruins and marble bits and pieces, and gathered all the bits and pieces from around. The rock crystal ore has been coming from um, the Void Miner. So let's have a look at the uh, recipe for that. The Void or miner from environmental tech has been producing this for us. So me and Ego have had a 0.91% chance of getting some, and we have managed to get quite a lot. Also, the aquamarine stuff we've managed to get quite a lot of as well. Uh, I don't really know much about this mod, so getting it in in reality, I believe it's just you go and find it, and then you get stuff. Wow, and then you get. Stuff like this. So that's pretty valuable. Oh, look at all this rock crystal. Nice. Seems to be nothing revealed. Nothing revealed. Nothing revealed. Okay. So I don't know what that just did. But you go and find this in the world um, using a wand, I believe. And so I will find a wand fairly soon. And we'll be able to do something with that. But <laughs> until then, I think... I think I've just wasted a couple of pieces of that. I better put the other away because, uh, yeah, I don't really need it just yet, do I? And I can't really put that away either. Oh, man. Okay, so to start with, I know I need some marble and uh, an ender pearl and some aquamarine. And I'm going to go over to the AE system. Now, I've upgraded my AE system just recently. I don't want to dwell on it because I've been doing it off camera. And this is all about starting with astral sorcery. But I have started doing a load of automation within the applied energistic system so the applied energistic system can make all its own components fairly swiftly so i can do all the other things i said i was going to do automating all the magic mods without needing to worry too much and this is the stuff i came in here for aquamarine shale it is available around and about the world and then we just dig it up and we end up with aquamarine right nine there we go, there we've got some. Yeah, so you get aquamarine now um, to 17. So that's where that comes from, what that looks like. Um, I believe the other stuff is from other mods. So this is the one we need to look out for here. And there's also this, which we've just seen, which is the other uh, thing that comes through the Void Miner, which is what this setup's all about, the Void Miner set. So yeah, there's that setup. Um, and the automation of every magic mod and all the crafting recipes and all that with my applied energies logistic system is for later in the season right now i seem like i've lost my astral tome my astral tome requires me to make some more stuff and i haven't got it oh great i need some more uh, yeah actually i need some paper i've got plenty of paper down here I think we did this last time as well because we had Thorncraft and I made loads of paper for Thorncraft and since then this has been regrowing and resorting. Um, so I'll have to turn that back on in a bit and put that back in place. My, my cows currently, they have uh, nowhere to live but I do plan on having a little milking station for them just over there. So I've got three and a couple of babies because I bred them earlier 
And of course, I've got wheat to breed them up a little bit more. So I'll have myself a little cow farm later for making more and more books. But for straight away, I do need to make more paper. And then make this astral sorcery book. I'm not sure if I need to do anything special about this. This crafting recipe here is showing in JEI. But it also shows up in here in a luminous crafting table. Which we can't make until we get to that stage. I can also buy it for $20 from the quest book. If I don't want to go through this process. A diamond and a piece of marble and a book. Or just pay $20 in game credit from the economy mod. That uh, yeah, and take it then. You do get a new astral tome that way. So uh, yeah, what was I doing? I was making a book. This is me getting started in anything, really, isn't it? This is me getting started in anything, and then a piece of marble there. Okay, we need astral sorcery marble. So I changed the marble into astral sorcery marble, which should be along here somewhere. That is astral sorcery marble. There we go. Astral sorcery marble block sorted. Um, and Astral Sorcery Tomes. Sorted. There we go. And then take this out for later. So with the Astral Sorcery Tome, let's have a look see what we've got in here. It should already have a few things and bits and pieces that I've done. Hover over one of the clusters. Zoom in using the W and S. Okay. W and S. Discovery tab. Okay. Let's see what we've got. Constellations wise, I've discovered these four already. Um, and that's it. Oh, five. I've discovered five already. Now, I believe those are the only five you actually need at the beginning. So, I'm not too worried now. I've been doing plenty of exploring and grabbing all these blocks and stuff. And now, I've managed to grab a couple of these. Look, a couple of each of these. So, there's the five that we start out with. Excellent. They're the constellations. Sorted. Can I click on them and see what else? It doesn't show me anything else. Do I have to study them? I don't know. Research-wise, Discovery tab. Let's have a scroll into the Discovery tab and let's see what we've got in here. We've got another little quest book-like thing going on here. So with this quest book, we start with the Constellation Papers. Inside chests found in the scattered shrines across the land, explorers occasionally find blank uh, scrolls. Removing one of these scrolls from the chest causes the name to appear in the top, blah, 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 blah. So I've collected those. They appear then in here, and we've got all that. Uh, further inspection seems as though they've written enchanted. Uh huh. Okay. Paper can be filed between the last few pages of the astral sorcery for easy access and organization. The filed papers can be re retrieved by holding shift and opening the tome. Okay. So there's that. Ancient shrines. I've been to a few ancient shrines. I need to have a quick read of this. Okay, so the most interesting piece about the ancient shrines is to get a crafting table and place it close by to yield the starlight crafting type stuff. So I can then craft myself a resonating one. Um, I'm not sure where these are supposed to lead to. I think there's stuff under one of these. Something somewhere. Maybe. Under one of these sides. Or maybe this is the wrong place for it. Hey, how you doing? Have some of this. Thank you. And go away. Goodbye, thank you, and goodbye. Uh, nothing. Hey, baby, get off. Why is it so dangerous out at night? Out at night against all the undead all around. Um, I'm guessing that there's something in here. Yeah, here we go. So down underneath one of those big structures, there is one of these crystal things. And then we're supposed to place the table somewhere close by. And we should see the shine of moonlight going through here. Now, I believe these crystals, floating crystals, just store uh, moonlight uh, from above. Whether it's day or night, this should work. As far as I'm aware, it should work. So, when we put our astral sorcery marble in... Uh, I've just got those, actually. Do they work in here? Put those two in there and put that in there. Yeah, that works as well. I can get this resonating wand. Boom. Resonating wand achieved. Now I'm just going to leave this here. I'm also going to mark it on my map so that I can come back to it. Okay, there's that. There we go. So now that um, that's set up and I can come back here anytime I want. Now I must find a way out. And I think that I set this up like so. And then I should be able to just bounce out. I would just put ladders in normally. 
Come on. Thank you. I just put ladders in normally, but we'll be coming back here again and again. And there's lots of other places around here that have these blocks. So I'll come and get some more blocks later as well. Get out of it, you. Get out. Yeah, goodbye. Now, if we hold the resonating wand and it's night time, we should be able to see these crystals. Oh, look. Look at these little uh, things going up. It's like snowdrops coming down and things going up. So that shows where you would then dig. And it shows it being right here. So we would dig right down here. I'm not going to dig straight down because that is a foolish method that only noobs would do. As you can tell, we are a long way down, getting close to this level now where we're at, uh, um, yeah, the really low Y levels. But somewhere close here should be some of that rock. We're into bedrock. So, there it is. Okay. So right down at bedrock level, that is where the rock crystal ore is when you get this stuff. Ping. We've got a load of this stuff. Now, revealed something. Something seems to be here, but understanding it is not yet revealed. Okay. So I've got four for that one rock crystal in this area. I'm going to get the redstone as I go, and I'm on my way out. Okay. We seem to be getting a lot of stuff from a long way around. Now, uh... I think that I want to change this. Let's have a purple bag. Um, I thought about getting a new bag for us to be able to just go round and round and round the houses. Hold on, that should be purple, shouldn't it? Do I have to dye it purple? Do I have a purple dye? Yeah, I, I thought about going round the, round the houses and just like making some AE system over there. But in actual fact, most of the time when I'm running around all over the place, I just want to put the stuff away in a bag. So these quantum bags are good. And I just need some dye to put something else in. To make it a change of colour. Right, just need dye to change the colour. So I'm going to put all these rock crystals in here. And these raw materials that we're picking up for astral sorcery. All in a bag. And leave it alone for a bit. Right. So what's the next thing that we're supposed to be doing after that? Um, now we've done that. And we've got our rock crystal... And we've got our shale and all that kind of stuff. We've got our constellation papers. We've got the thing doing the stuff. And we've got most of the way through sooty marble. <laughs> so we put some coal, marble around coal to make some sooty marble. And then we make some luminous crafting table. Luminous crafting table's got to be created through uh, starlight or an unobstructed view of the sky to collect starlight. So we're going to need a block of sooty marble and a few other bits and pieces. That's fairly simple. Uh, let's just grab some more of this marble from over here. And we'll go and make some sooty marble. I found some coal while I was out. Not that I didn't have enough already. But I guess get some coal. Uh, there we go. Let's get some coal and some sooty marble around here. There we go. We get eight per time. So we get 24 of those. Yep. We'll make another crafting table. Uh, you can see all the different um, applied energistic stuff I've now got ready to process things for me. So we got quite a good job going of having lots of auto-processing, automatic stuff going on. And then we need some marble. Marble. So in this table where we've got this crystal doing the stuff, we will put this all together and hope for the best. Yeah, there we go. So our luminous crafting tables. Now I'm making... Five, because I fear that they're all very similar in how they work that they require a bit of starlight so if I put one let's put one here it's not going to work because it doesn't have direct view but it does have connection to the crystal so even though it doesn't have direct starlight access it does have access to the crystal so this is now a little crafting area for us to sort this out it should then start filling with starlight here and we can do other crafting recipes with it. But I want to get back home and do that within the dome if I can. So, uh, yeah. So back in this crafting area, we should be able to place these down in different chunks around here and still be in direct starlight as far as I'm aware. And because we're high up, we should have lots of starlight in here. Like, yeah, Fully craftable. Now, each chunk is supposed to be slightly different. So if I put the chunk borders on, 
And then I've got one in this chunk here. I would have one in this chunk here. And then we'll put one in this chunk over here. Now obviously these will get moved around as and see fit. But this is why I made so many. So that each area can have one in. And they should all be filling up nicely. So if I use too much starlight during the course, then I've got a few spares as well. Right? That's the plan for that. Um, so now what do I make with them? Um, we've got a new research. We've, oh, we've got a new research. We've got discovery. Now we've got exploration. So exploration is now opened up. Let me just double check um, what we've got in discovery first. Uh, yeah, we've done everything in Discovery and it's not opened up any more tabs in Discovery. Okay, so we'll cycle through into Exploration. So the Exploration tab has got quite a lot of stuff on it. Didn't really know where to begin. Um, there are tools. You can make crystal tools, which basically craft the same as normal vanilla tools, but with the crystals instead. And that will give you mining and tools and stuff, which is okay. The, the fact that you have to have a diamond tool in order to go down and get the crystals in the first place means that the diamond tools are probably going to be better than crystal tools. But still, they do have some special abilities, apparently. Rock crystals can have special abilities throughout. Um, but for now, we don't need to worry about those. I think the thing that I need to work on the most is getting into this looking glass. And the looking glass allows us to look at the sky and check out the patterns that bear resemblance to the constellation papers that are found in the ruined shrines and learn more information and unlock new things. That's kind of what we want. So we need a glass lens and a few bits and pieces with some starlight in a luminous crafting table. This requires some starlight, not much in a luminous crafting table, with some panes and aquamarine. So that's where we're going to begin. Now, uh, I did have some aquamarine in there this is good and i've got some pains i've now installed myself a um a lift straight up and out under here and one of these luminous crafting tables that has some light even though it's midday here look even though it's midday because of the height i think or the location maybe we still have a lot of starlight that's probably height related and so we should still be able to make one of these lenses in here uh like so Okay. Oh, I know. I know. I know. Don't get. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. I know this. I know this. So I'm supposed to right click with the resonating wand in order to make it work. Oh, lovely little sound as well. Bing. And then we get the glass lens. Awesome. Now the next thing was these uh, and these and uh, that and that and then the glass lens. Now that shows me here that I need a lot more starlight. So I'm not going to be able to do that until night time, really, because that's starlight night time. Doubt any of these have got that much starlight in them. Nah. They've got a large amount, though. It's still a fairly good amount, considering it's daytime. I'm still getting a lot um, because of this place. Let's just take one right up to the top, actually. Let's take one right up and see what it's like up there. Uh, let's put one up here. What do we get here? Ooh, that's quite a lot. That's quite a lot. Still, I don't think it's quite enough for that crafting recipe that we had. But it's quite a lot being high up in the air. So the higher up you are gives you another bonus. Yeah, it's just after there and we're just below there. So I'm going to have to wait until night time for this recipe. But crafting way up there is good for really, really tough uh, crafting recipes which require a lot of stuff. Another thing I know now is that these uh, rock crystals now have the details. Now we've got the exploration tab open. They've now got the details of how much they are worth and how much they do and all that kind of stuff. So we've got lots of purity levels and sizes and cutting and all that kind of stuff, which I'm not 100% sure what any of that does yet, but I'm sure that'll have a good reference in the future. Till, now, till tonight, though. Let's, let's just hang around until tonight. While I was waiting, I just thought, why not? Uh, there's a few more things that we can craft while we've got this much in. Uh, and does that re levels reduce? It does, but then it gives you a straight back. Okay. Uh, so this is a grindstone. And I can place the grindstone down. It looks a bit odd like there. So let's put it somewhere a bit closer. Place the grindstone down. 
It probably has to have some kind of starlight. And then I put stuff on it. I believe I put crystals on it. So let's just direct, grab a crystal and bang a crystal on it. Yeah. And then I right, I punch right click, and it broke it. Really? Is that what happens? This one's a cutting six percent. So I'll put that on it. Right click it once, and then take it off. Shift right click to take it off, and then what have I got? 14% cutting. Okay. So, does it? did it break for a reason? Is there a reason it broke? I don't know. But that's gone up again. The size goes down to 51 each time. So, it is technically reducing the size, uh, but increasing the cutting of the purity levels and stuff are going down. And I don't know how that works yet, but I was able to make that. Apparently, then, I can grindstone ores and things into dust format so this is just a simple ore and i keep clicking it until it turns into dust so it turned one ore into two pulverized lead dust i don't know if you can do it with this no but it can double ores basically it's an ore doubling machine this grindstone which is pretty good uh we're, we're nearly dark now nearly nearly time for our experiment to get this sorted out Let's see if there's any more in there now we're getting closer look it's building up Every time the sun goes down, it moves slightly. Gets a bit closer towards our crafting ability. So, we're very close now. I like that it keeps track of where the sun is. I suppose it's very important for this particular mod that starlight and constellations and where the sun is... Oh, look, it pops that up then. Um, ...is all very important to doing it properly. Oh, and such a sweet sound. Okay, now... I can look through my dome at constellations, which is cool. Just right click on it. What I wanted to do was go up to the top and do it from here because really, why wouldn't you? Like this is ideally the best place, isn't it, for the observatory? Uh, it kind of stops seeing stuff when we get too close. So it does require like an open sky area. Um, so standing on the edge of here and looking out is a good place. Then I can look out and see all around me. I can't see the moon for some reason though. Maybe it's not quite high enough. But I can see all the twinkle twinkle little stars. Uh, and there should be some constellations in here somewhere. Um, looking around. Can I see anything anywhere? You'd think I'd spot a couple of constellations straight away, wouldn't you? Go back around to the moon there. Seeing if I can see it. Oh, oh, something's coming into view. That's a bit odd. I'm going up that way and the constellation's coming into view that way. <laughs> but okay, so there is a constellation there. And what do I do with it? Okay, so I'm checking the book to have a look to see what these constellations are all about. And... It seems that there are some that should be apparent. So that looks like it's got three stars at what corner and four or five at the bottom. Four or five at the bottom. Escape there, but keep looking at that star direction. And checking out the constellations again. It could be that, couldn't it? It could be Dissidia. So with that in mind, if I press shift, I get a mouse pointer which I notice, and then I can click on it. Aha! I can click on it and draw across to it in kind of this way, and try and remember which way around that went. Uh, it then goes down and across, double pickaxe. A double pickaxe, that's how i got to remember it. Okay. Does that look like double pickaxe to you? Yeah. Yes, okay. So that's the pickaxe joining there. That's the out to the pickaxe head there. And that's out to the pickaxe head there. So these two are then joining up together like this. And those two are joining up together like that. And we've solved a problem! Ba -ba -ba -ba. Wow. Dissidia. Okay, so now I've got Dissidia. And when I look up in the night sky, there is there it is. Why was I looking there? It's there. It must have moved. But now when I look up in the night sky, I see a Dissidia. I think that this doesn't really work off the stars in the same way, to be honest. 
Uh, yeah, there's Dissidia. It's not, it's, I can see it. I can see it twice on my screen, so clearly I'm not looking in a straight place. But anyway, I've got to try and then find other star systems around here uh, that is not Dissidia. But that's the only one that seems to be popping up at me. Maybe it's different times of the year. Maybe it's different times of the day or night. Maybe I need to be looking further down because at the minute I couldn't see off the edge here. So now I can see the off the edge here. Maybe I can see some others. Um, maybe this will help me find something new. Um, maybe it requires a different time of day to see the different things. I don't know. But yeah, Stargazing 101 is now a thing. So we've got the first one there. Does that then reveal anything in the book under this particular thing? Here we go. Life in this constellation seems to be unstoppable, piercing both materials and creatures alike. It's brightest at those points then, is it? Okay. So the other constellations, I presume, is going to be bright at other parts of the constellations. Yeah. At different times of the moon being high, I should be able to see different constellations. Is that how it works? Until eventually I get all the constellations in my book. Well, there's a little bit of research for me to do before the next episode. But that is all for today's episode. Thank you all very, very much for watching today's episode of Getting Started with Astral Sorcery on the Nemgo Reborn server. I will see you next time for some more magic. Let's get started on something else like uh, blood magic in the next episode. Then we can start bringing them all together and combining and messing around with the AE system and having a great lot of automation of these magic mods and lots of fun, experimentational fun. Until then, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.